Coming up on this week's All About Hennessy show, April is Child Abuse Awareness Month. We learn what to look for. Just what is the wellness mercantile? And fire and wind don't mix. All this and much more on this episode of The All About Hennessy Show. This show made possible in part by Pioneer. GoPioneer.com Welcome to this week's edition of the All About Hennessy Show. I think this is six. Six. How do you do that? Six. six. Yeah, six. Um, this week's co-host is Stacy Klein with Wellness Mercantile and many other hats she wears. We'll get to that here in a minute. Uh, Brittany Gassner with the Kingfisher County DA's office is here to talk about Child Abuse Awareness Month. And of course, Dr. Woods will be here to talk about all things school. Did you smell the smoke yesterday? I I did not smell the smoke. I think all of Dover was on fire, but it I, wasn't really. I, I think I did see the ambulances or the fire engines and hear them, but I didn't smell the smoke. Well, you know, I was, I was working in my office and I was listening to the scanner, the fire radio, and heard them calling for help with this fire. It was getting bigger. And, but what really got my attention was Tracy Macy sent me some photos and she said she saw some people watering down their properties. So that it got serious. So. When I got there, the wind was over 30 miles an hour and the smoke was really thick, like all the way to Hennessy. Um, Union Pacific Railroad even had to stop the trains for several hours because the fire was so close uh, to the tracks and for uh, poor visibility. So it was fortunate that the fire didn't get any farther into Dover because that, that could have been a real mess. Yeah, but, so it just a lot of smoke. That's good. Cause... All right. When we come back, Brittany Gassner with the Kingfisher County District Attorney's Office is here to talk about Child Abuse Awareness Month. This show made possible in part by Taggart's Garden Center, south of Hennessy on Highway 81. And we're back. And I have Brittany Gassner with the Kingfisher County District's Attorney's Office Child Aware, am I, you're, I'm screwing it all up. That's Help okay. me with it. So what is your title? Okay, so officially I am the Victim Witness Coordinator for the Kingfisher County District Attorney's Office. Okay. And in a subset of those duties, I am the coordinator for the Kingfisher County Child Multidisciplinary Child Abuse Response Team, also known as the MCART team. You can see why we shortened that. That's why she has a two-sided business card, because that goes runs it's, and, it yeah. It does. Okay. It just keeps going and going. So what does that mean? What, what, what do you do? Okay, so... The Child Abuse Response Team is made up of law enforcement, DHS, our office, medical and mental health, and we get together and talk about child abuse in Kingfisher County because it does happen here. And this is April, which is... National Na Child Abuse Awareness Month. There you go. Very cool. And I thought it was interesting that you guys are, like, connected to the community. You're not, like fly in from Oklahoma City on your horse and we are um, I actually grew up in Hennessy and mm -hmm. was here until I was in eighth grade my family my dad's family's been here forever um, and most of our law enforcement grew up here they went to school here so we know these families in, and communities um, caseworkers same thing and how long have you been with the DA's office I have been with the DA's office since 2012 and mm -hmm. Prior to that, I was at the Garfield County Child Advocacy Center for four years. Oh, so you've kind of like done this a I've, while. I've done this for a You know a, what for to watch bit, for. Yes. And very, very cool. So I understand that um, COVID really kind of tripped you guys up. With Tell us about those numbers you were telling me about. So COVID was an interesting twist for, for everybody. But for people that watched child, child abuse and neglect numbers, they were it was really kind of disturbing for us. In that first 30 days, so mm -hmm. like middle of March to middle of April. Right. Um, of course, you have the hotline that you call in if you suspect abuse. You, you call that number and, and, and make that report. In that first 30 days, those calls fell off by 50%. Wow. That, what, what, tri what would trigger that? Well, that first 30 days, children weren't in school. Oh. 
um, children weren't, oh, the places that okay. children normally go were yep. closed. They okay. weren't going to the library. There wasn't they people going watching and uh, reporting. Right. And... People weren't putting their eyes on those children. Wow. Now, um, I understand you, 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 of course, this isn't something you just like do. You got to kind of know how it works and everything. So right. you guys like have outreach with teachers and law enforcement. We and... do. We do. We um, provide, we actually have a, a training curriculum that we can use for agencies mm -hmm. and for schools to learn how to recognize and report child abuse appropriately. Right. Uh, make sure that their protocols are in place that fall in line with the law mm -hmm. and keep the school going the way they're supposed to be going. Um, but we also, through our team, we're grant funded, so we're able to send um, our professionals that are team members to different trainings so they learn more. You're about. telling me that's like really expensive and it's you you have a grant expensive. to be able to send. We do. We get about $20,000 a year mm -hmm. um, because we are a functioning team and have been for uh, since 2014. Mm -hmm. And with that money, I can send people to these trainings so they can learn more about how to. Well, the more you know, the more you can Absolutely. you know what to look for. Absolutely. Um, how does Oklahoma stack up against other places? This is one of those loaded questions we didn't talk about, so it, now I just got it, her. It is. Um, wing it. Wing it. Okay. <laughs> and go. Um, Oklahoma does some things very, very well when it comes to child abuse. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think that we've done really well is how we've written our uh, mandated reporter law. Um, we have d made it perfectly clear if you are an adult over the age of 18 mm -hmm. and you suspect a child is being abused, you have a legal obligation to report that. So you're like required, not, don't, it's not like you're being nice, you need to do that. You need to do that. Wow. You are a mandated reporter. Okay. Um, lots of states will go off on tangents about naming everybody who has to do that. <laughs> uh, so they'll list out like teachers and doctors and counselors and pastors and- right. And you get you start reading the list and go, okay, I'm not on here, so I'm not required. And Oklahoma went, mm, no, if you're over 18 and you so, suspect it, well, you report so it. So how does it work? Um, you know, so if I witness something, do I call this hotline number? Do I call the police? Who do, who do I, where do I go to? That's a good question. Because you can call either. I guess you really shouldn't like go up and tap a person on the shoulder and say, don't do that. We don't usually recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you see a child that's in danger right now, I would say pick up the phone, call 911, okay. just like you would in any other emergency situation. Okay. Um, but if it's something that you kind of see something, you kind of know the, the child, and mm -hmm. things just aren't adding up, you've got some suspicions, call that 800 number. Mm -hmm. and, and 800 number right here. Okay. Okay. And uh, call that 800 number make a report the biggest thing to remember is in the law it says if you suspect mm -hmm. we're not asking you to do an investigation we're not asking you to know for sure mm -hmm. if you see something that just doesn't quite seem okay. right so what isn't just quite right what are we what are we looking for bruises uh it can be it can be marks don't want to go home they don't want to go home it can be things that children say mm -hmm. Um, if a child says something that you go, wait, what? Mm. Um, a, a really good ex example was my, my son, when he, when he was little, um, told his kindergarten teacher that he saw his mommy and daddy making love in the kitchen. We were hugging. And when he, she asked him the next question, which was, uh, what did you see? <laughs> well, they were hugging. <laughs> Television. It, yeah. It's great. And um, <laughs> so when I went to pick him up, I was appropriately mortified when she said, uh, you might want to have yeah, that conversation. Don't be hugging in the kitchen. Don't be yes. hugging in the kitchen. Um, but it can be things like that. Now, sometimes it's just that simple as the way the child has interpreted it. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Sure. Um, sometimes it's more than that, though. Mm -hmm. um, if you are talking to a child and they have knowledge about things that maybe they shouldn't have knowledge about, mm -hmm. um, very adult issues, and that can be things like drug use, mm -hmm. that can be things like domestic violence, mm -hmm. um, that can be things like sexu sexual abuse, mm -hmm. make that call. Sure. Because there's a reason why they know these things, and maybe 
it's not anything going on other than they've got parents that feel like, you know what, we need to make sure our children are informed. Yeah. Um, it, but it may not be. Mm-hmm. And I personally would much rather err on the side of caution and okay. make that So call. if, say, I called, this is confidential, there's no, they don't know who called no. or why or anything. No, you it, can make an, an anonymous report. Okay. Um, what will happen is you... For the 800 number, you would call the 800 number, you would talk to somebody on the phone, they're gonna ask you a whole bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, it's okay to say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, They're gonna take all that information, they're gonna take a look at the history and everything and determine whether or not they need to send somebody out immediately. Mm -hmm. Is this something that can can fall into a, we can make contact in a couple of days? Mm -hmm. Is this something that doesn't quite rise up to that level of we're gonna send somebody out? Right. The good news is, though, that at the end of that phone call, they're going to give you a referral number. Mm -hmm. And in about 48 hours, you can call back to that 800 number with that referral number, and you can ask them. If anything happened. What happened with my referral. Okay. All right. So it doesn't just, like, fall off the earth, and you never know whether anything happened or not. And that's part of the reason why we have these teams, because Mm -hmm. that's what we do is... Our, my team in Kingfisher comes together once a month, and we talk about all those cases. Mm-hmm. We talk about the referrals we've gotten. Tell me about the team now. It's it's wide. There's people it is. from all spectrums. It in is. That. It's the entire county. So we have invited all of the law enforcement agencies in Kingfisher mm-hmm. County. Um, we have all of the DHS caseworkers mm-hmm. that work in Kingfisher County. We have. This is, makes me really excited. Our medical person that that serves on our team Mm -hmm. has not only been trained to do the sexual assault examinations on children and adults, Mm -hmm. but she is also trained as a child abuse medical examiner. And she did that with Dr. Mary Stockett, who is one of our four child abuse experts in the state of Mm -hmm. Oklahoma. She had a grant. Um, Rachel Cameron in Kingfisher Mm -hmm. at Trail Creek Wellness is who was who said, yes, I want to do this. So she went through that whole year-long program with Dr. Stockett to learn how to do this. So So, so we have people highly qualified locally. Locally, we don't have to. And that's something that we didn't have until the last couple of years. Mm. Um, If we had a child that was injured, they had to go to Children's in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. They had to go to Tulsa in some cases. If we had a child with a possible sexual assault. Mm -hmm. We had to send them to Oklahoma City. We had to send them to Tulsa. We had to send them someplace else, and Mm -hmm. now we can do that local. Very, very cool. So remember, there are some kids that just don't want to go home or actually dread vacation. And that's that's not good. No, and that would so, be a, for me. That would be a big flashing warning sign saying, "Hey, yep. uh, there's maybe something going on." Awesome. The other thing I would say is, if a child says something to you, um, a few of the things: don't ever promise a child that you're not going to tell, mm-hmm. because when you have to tell, they're not ever going to trust you again. Mm-hmm. Um, but there, the things you can do: listen to them. Thank them for telling you. Mm-hmm. Don't ask them a lot of questions because we don't need you to do the investigation. <laughs> Please. Mm-hmm. Let, we'll put that with the professionals. Yep. Um, but take that information, make those phone calls, report that, and let's help keep Oklahoma kids safe. Brittany, thank you so much for coming for April is the uh, Child Abuse Awareness Month. It National, is. National Child, Child Abuse Awareness Month. Yep. And if you drive through Kingfisher, um, take a look at the front of our courthouse the because we'll have the pinwheels. Yes. The uh, blue and silver pinwheels are the uh, sign that go with the Ch- Child Abuse Awareness Month. And we put mm-hmm. up a pinwheel garden in front of the courthouse every year in April. Very cool. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you. When we come back, Dr. Woods will be here with an update on what's shaking at the school. This show made possible in part by Golden Chick. North Main Street, Hennessy. I'm ready, Roy. I'm ready. Here we go. How about that band? That fantastic. Wasn't that something? Yeah, uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, and then there was food involved. M and M's. Yeah, yeah. and um, the uh, use of technology integrated with in it. We did the the cahoots quiz. I did not do well, even though uh, failed. Journey is a favorite of mine. Uh, but for those of the, you that weren't there, you missed the, a treat. The, this wasn't only a concert. This was this was an, an event yep. because it was like what do you call it? Ammunition. Yeah. Yeah, because it was M M&M and M theme. Yeah. And then you 
Uh, he had a, a quiz, an mm -hmm. interactor quiz where you would interact with. Right. That was the Kahoot. Yeah. That's what that's called. Kahoot. That is so cool. Yeah. I've never yeah. seen that in action before. Yeah, it's, the kids love it. Yep. It's, so you, you had a little app in. on your phone and you would interact and answer questions right. like a trivia game. And Kids at school, here at school, they use their, their device, their iPad or their Chromebook. Right. And they can interact the same way. Um, but yeah, that, you, you can just stop and do the middle of what are you doing and do a quick quiz and check understanding and, mm -hmm. and um, mastery and all that. So. Uh, yeah, he was he. Mr. Mr. Ray earned his dollars yesterday. He he did a really nice job. Well, not only, I mean, he took that band from six or seven to mm -hmm. where it is. I don't know, it's sort of twenty five yeah. or thirty now or something. Think, uh, the numbers that we because I I had asked him that with the uh, marching bands we went through. Uh, a, he had a, a somewhat sizable purchase order he would like to have placed, and and I I learned a ton. I did not realize you use different instruments for band and for stage band and for marching band. Like, like the tuba is too big, a tuba tuba is too big to carry, like if you're marching, so you oh. use a sousaphone or a marching tuba, I think is what he called it. Didn't know that. But anyway, we, we uh, so so we were we were um, talking about that, and I said, how, well, how, one of the things the board will probably want to know when they see this PO is how many kids, and I think we we're already at 28, 7 through 12, we have 28 kids that were playing in the band and stuff. So, But he has a big under- yeah, uh, uh, what, sixth grade. Six, six there's like up. twenty just sixth graders that are they're anticipating yeah. moving. Forward. I was excited to see a, like an actual drum kit mm -hmm. and uh, electric guitars. Le uh, bass. They had the bass there, yeah. and I think you'll see that continue to grow and mature. Mm -hmm. um, again, a pet band is going to be, uh, I think, a, a really really strong area because of the fact that you, just, you can just have so much fun with that, and that's mm -hmm. what it looked like was going on last night. Was, the cool thing about or Tuesday night. Adam is was, he's so. a a professional working right. artist. He's a yes. um, musician. And mm -hmm. so he knows what's current, and, and he doesn't right. have the kids doing Beethoven and things. That, that's not important, yeah. but he lets them do popular current music that excites them and yeah. they can relate Absolutely. to. Yeah, very, very cool. Yeah, it's a good start. Yep. Okay, so... Okay. Uh, Mark band concert scratch off. Scratch that one off, and then yeah. enrollment? What's going on with well, enrollment? Uh, so Renee, uh, you know how Renee talks in all explanation well, she points. She was here a couple weeks ago, yeah. or a week ago. And she, yeah. You see what a dynamo she is. She kind of takes care of the, the enrollment. Mm -hmm. She got us where it's all online, but some folks do not have online enrollment mm -hmm. because they don't they, they don't have the capacity c to connect. Sure. Uh, you can use your phone, but it's it's a it, you know using your cell phone yeah, like that a is a challenge. Cumbersome. You're filling in blanks yep. and things like that. The average twelve year old can handle it, but yeah, us, us exactly. Older people um, struggle. So the online enrollment May first is when it's due. Uh, Twenty Tuesday, April twentieth. That's an important one. Write hope, that one down. Yeah, I hope I hope April. It's, it's sure. I'm sure it's April. Wouldn't be May because we'd be out of school. No, we'd be done. So it is April twentieth. April twentieth. From 1 p.m. to 5.30 p.m., we're going to have enrollment help in the EEC. Okay. Either in the, it, we'll either do it in the foyer right as you walk in, mm -hmm. or it'll be in the uh, lobby mm -hmm. area, depending on how, how much and space it takes the EEC it takes is up. the Early e Childhood... No, 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 no. no. Oh. Eagle oh. Event Center. Eagle Event Center. ECC. Acronyms. Yes. E okay. Eagle Early Event Childhood Center. Childhood Center is ECC. Okay. Eagle Event Center is EEC. Okay, the so EEC is easily, the big round building. Yes, the big, yeah, the big round <laughs> building. It, 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 the, the initials are easy to mix, uh, but the, the buildings aren't. Too many E's. Too many E's. Okay. Uh, my, uh, my oldest grandson is E. Ian. He's just short E for there short. That confused me even more. Um, Thank you. I hope when he gets older he does like a real cool E. For his signature, <laughs> instead of spelling I A N, he could just spell it E. Just put like E, mm -hmm. like everyone know who E is. Nice. Um, so you need to so Tuesday, April twentieth, from one to five thirty, uh, you need to bring your birth certificate, or the the child's birth certificate, mm -hmm. child shot records, proof of residency, and this is if you are a new student. Okay. If you're new to the district, if you just moved here, you transferred here, you just are coming into the district, uh, moving into town. You need to bring all these things before you can uh, be part of the enrollment. Birth certificate, shot records, and proof of residency. But proof of residency is usually like a, a water bill, yeah, um, something simple, something that says Hennessy, like maybe you paid has a, an address on it. Yeah, and, and you you paid into the town coffers that way. Okay. They're going to have computers set up with help. Mm -hmm. They will not have school lunch forms. A lot of people look for the free and reduced lunch forms. Those don't come out till July. Okay. That's a federal programs thing, so they won't be out into July but they will be eventually be online as well. Um, 
Uh, so Any need chance help that, that, so. that, that the, the completely free lunch thing is going to continue? Well, the intention is to have it continue. Mm -hmm. it's, that's, that should be a long, a, a forever thing. Coming attraction. We'll wait and see. Yeah, what, but okay. the plan is that it will. But, but we still, t to get to do that, to get to have the, the free lunch for everybody, all those kiddos, teachers still have to pay and guests have to pay, but for all the kiddos, um, that's based on the fact of, of free and reduced lunches. So we still need you to fill them out. So okay, so you still date. need the paperwork to help the school right. get qualified. Right, Okay. because yeah, you, okay. have, you have a qualifying threshold that you have to, to mm -hmm. hit, and so we still need that information filled out. Okay. This is only for folks who do not have internet. Okay. So. If you go, oh, good, they're doing that, so I don't have to do it, mm -hmm. but I could be doing it, do it anyway. You still need yeah. to do, yeah, yeah. do the this is thing. for This is just for folks who don't have connectivity and can't get online any, any way, shape, or form. So, uh, again, you can do it on your phone, and remember your login. If you have a login, you'll need to bring that um, as, as well. Okay. And you could have a login without being able to get on, because I mean, you could have could have one well, time. Well, sure, you on, just so. have one. You don't. Right. Yeah, know it yet. So, okay. that's the... Um, Enrollment uh, on Tuesday, April the 20th. Again, mark that down. That's that's coming right up. Cool. Okay. Got it. All right. So that's one of mine. You want to do one of yours? You want me to keep going? No, keep going. All right. So we have started reducing our COVID restrictions. Oh. So what okay. we are doing, here's the, the first step happened the, on Monday. So it's kind of a little bit late, but... Uh, student, staff, and community will still practice social distancing, frequent hand washing, use of, of uh, hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. Masks will be worn in all common areas, mm -hmm. hallways, cafeterias, um, events, activities, gatherings, stuff like that. But the um, wearing a mask in the classroom will be optional on the teacher's uh, decision, whether they want to be wear masks or not. And the reason is... Um, we might have someone that's at a higher risk, mm -hmm. you know, as a teacher or somebody that's over the age limit or, or uh, you know, other reasons. Uh, they they uh, may have a, a person at home that can't be um, sure. given the, uh, can't be exposed. So that if the teacher says, hey, we still are wearing masks in my class, they still wear masks in that class. Okay, up if to the, the teacher. Up to the teacher. Sure. If the teacher's comfortable with them, uh, you know, taking their masks off, mm -hmm. then, then that's a restriction we are uh, allowing as well. And I assume if a student doesn't feel comfortable, they can keep their mask on. Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And would recommend it. it, it and, and again, I, when I'm in the school, I will be wearing my mask mm -hmm. just, just because I believe it's, it's important. But um, we, we, we're certainly trying to be understanding of the, the community and, and the community has been so good mm -hmm. to support us and to, to while, say, while I don't like this we are supporting of it because I, bl I believe everyone's been working together in a, in a way that we, we do in everything it seems like okay. but uh, but again we we recognize that there's a a, a, a a need and a desire to start getting back to a more uh, I hate to use the n normal word again but whatever uh, normal is yeah, yeah. Uh, but okay. so so uh, and then um, if you want a locker middle school up Mm -hmm. If you want to, you just go to the office and request it. And you oh, can so you can get, get your, your locker, locker back. Right. Put more yeah. junk in there. Exactly. That, mm -hmm. that, that's been kind of nice, not having to worry about cleaning out lockers at the end of school. But, <laughs> but it, we, and, and part of the understanding for that was, I, I get it, some of the younger kids, I thought they were running around with a backpack with a Chromebook or an iPad, and that was it. Mm -hmm. But they still got about they 50 still pounds. Have books. Yeah, well, and stuff. They got their essentials. Mm -hmm. And so. They've got them in bags. You backpacks. need wheels. You need wheels. Yeah, and, and I was at, I guess it was Autry, the big technology center, mm -hmm. and all all the nursing students have like little suitcases with mm -hmm. wheels, and they're all it's like this little train going by with all of their yeah. little books and computers yeah. and yeah, they got those uh, rolling uh, backpacks. Yeah. And, but but so if, if you're a kiddo that needs, you got a lot of stuff with you, you, you go to the, go to your principal. And uh, ask for uh, a locker, and you can you can get a locker assigned. Reassigning to you lockers. Again. Okay. Okay. So that's that's what happens. Mon happened to Monday, uh, March 29th. That's that was the practice in place at that okay. point. And we're going to wait for two weeks, and that which would be Monday, April the 12th, which would be the board meeting. Mm -hmm. And if something's not changed, if there hasn't been a huge spike, or we haven't had a lot of exposure here at school. Uh, then we will kind of loosen the restrictions in the hallways and the other gathering places. So mm -hmm. it'll kind of be school-wide that it will, you, you know, if you don't want to wear a mask, 
then that would be uh, allowable. Okay. Uh, we are absolutely still following this social distancing, frequent hand washing, use of hand sanitizers, and we are encouraging everyone to continue wearing your masks. Mm -hmm. we, that's, that would be the ideal situation. Everyone goes, you know, I, I kind of like the look. I, li I like how <laughs> half my face looks and half my face doesn't look. <laughs> And so, so that everyone would continue to wear masks. I would, I would prefer that. And we will follow CDC guidelines till the very end. But again, in response to the community and the, the kiddos, uh, we, we will uh, again let them um, uh, have a little more say in that. And, but still in the classroom, if the teacher is requesting that or in the hallway, if, if your classroom's walking down the hall and you want them to wear the mask, the teacher still has the authority to, to um, implement that. Okay. Um, again, CDC guidelines, oh, in the two-week deal, most of our staff should have their second shot. So, and, and, and have their second shot and the, have the window of time, you know, that it's supposed to be fully engaged. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I know we had, Cindy and I had our second shot done Saturday. They just so. moved, they closed the mall, by the way. Okay. And now they've moved it over to the, we're talking Garfield County. They, yes. uh, I got my shot Oakwood. at the mall. Right. But I think this week they've closed the mall and now they've moved it back to the Gulfer County Health Department. Okay. So don't go that. driving over to the mall before you check. Check yeah. before you go. Sure, yeah. sure. But that way, two weeks gives that time to take effect. Mm -hmm. And again, should uh, teachers then and staff then that would be concerned should have a layer of protection and comfort that they didn't have mm -hmm. before. And then as more kids continue to, because they opened that up for kiddos, so yep. as they get vaccinated, that allows us to do that more. So we're working towards getting... You know, it'd be great if we could graduate with no restrictions, that would be a coup. Wouldn't that be cool? That was not a promise. Mm -hmm. That was a, wouldn't it be cool? Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, again, that's that's what we're trying to do is we really want to end the year and in a, in a, that, that kind of launches us into next year is, is how, how we function. So. Okay. All right, so that is off. Uh, you want to talk about graduation or do you want to do it? No, let's go to graduation. Let's, all right, let's yeah. go to graduation. So. <clears throat> Uh, so the, do we have a date in stone now? We have a date in stone. Ooh, here we uh, go. Well, okay. So let, let me do this. Uh, these, this is a list of the activities and events coming up. Oh, this is um, an important one. These yeah. are things we didn't do last year. Yes. Um, Wednesday, May 28th at noon. I don't think that's May 28th. I think that's a That's typo. probably April. It has to be April. Wednesday, April. I'll ask Jill. We'll, we'll correct this next week. If um, Am I going to be on next week? Yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, April 28th at noon, Senior Ward Assembly in the Auditorium and Baccalaureate Practice at 1 to 3 in the Auditorium. Mm -hmm. Then Sunday, May 2nd, uh, 3 p.m. is Baccalaureate in the Auditorium and Conference Room. That must be, uh, Baccalaureate's in the Auditorium, that yeah, must the be conference the room cookies like and cookie, stuff yeah, afterwards. Little dinner, banquet uh, thing. Tuesday, May 4th, 8 to 3, graduation prep in the seminar room. That's got to be 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Graduation prep in the seminar room and Eagle Event Center. Uh, May 5th, uh, AP Lit Test. Kind of slipped some testing stuff in there. May 6th, HP History Testing at Eagle Event Center. And it is now set that graduation. So we're, it's, it's not pending. pending. Scratch out graduation pending. Graduation is May 9th. It's a Sunday. Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. And it will be in the Eagle Event Center. The big round building. The big round building that's not the early childhood <laughs> center. I will so, uh, leave that with me, okay. and I'll, I'll make a post of all these dates. All right. um, there you go. That's on yours. Our Facebook page as well as on the website. And again, it's at nine, uh, on May 9th, Sunday, May 9th, at 2 p.m. in the EEC. Doors open at 1.30. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be... Uh, Tickets required, or are we still limited okay. seating, or what's up with that? Here's the deal. Okay. You got to stay tuned because this will only be on the uh, what's the show called? I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. The All About Hennessy show. All About Hennessy show. Okay. Exclusive. Exclusive. Okay. Well, it'll probably be like in the Kingfisher paper and on the website <laughs> as well. But uh, we are, at this moment, we are shooting for uh, no restrictions. But yeah, I think with our population, there's no way we're going to overpopulate the dome. But the, the kicker is, if nothing happens, nothing changes. Yeah, if we don't have a huge, if we have a huge outbreak or something like that, and the hesitancy of announcing that is, people will plan that way now that we've said it out loud. Yep. And we 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 kind of kicked around whether we wanted to say too much about that or not. But um, again, 
we, we want it, we want things to be as as so normal if there's no outbreaks, possible. nothing really crazy happens. It may be yeah. an untethered possibly uh, graduation. But stay possibly, tuned but because we will keep everybody. We'll we'll, sure. we'll announce it as we go along if something starts to okay. to look a little bit. Um, what is that? How many is in the graduating class? Do you know? Is it is it a seven sixty? No, to I 70? think it's a. I think I think it's a smaller one. Okay. I think it's a little bit smaller, uh, 50, 60s. Okay. I'm not, sh I'm not sure. I'll, I'll try to make sure I have that information. All right. Miss Avila and Miss Murray, if you will take a note, I'm sure you're listening to this right now. Would you uh, tell me how many kiddos are in the graduating class? It would be good to know. Last year was a big, yeah. a big one, a really big mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they kind, of, you know, they kind of vary a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So ready for me to keep going? Yes, please. All right. So we have a treat for the community. Uh, the Moby, the uh, white activity bus, the old white activity yep. bus, not the new white activity The big activity bus. diesel, the, the one giant one, the one that's been decorating the bus barn for yes. a long, long time. It is uh, available it's for sale. Uh, make you yourself would, a Winnebago out of it. Yeah. Yep. You can do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Um, that that uh, the legals have been in place, and so we will be taking bids. I think through the whatever the May board meeting is, uh, and then we'll ex open those bids at the May board meeting. And we'll and, make a post uh, about that uh, soon, where we'll have yeah. a photo and then any instructions on how to bid on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's kind of a sad one of those things you yeah. hate to see go, it's but been around, and it stepped it's, up and it's been around longer than I thought. Yeah, I well, it and a, it doesn't run the the. the it, Eats up batteries, and the cost. Is, it's a great, great bus and a great vehicle, and the kids loved it. But it is again, we've replaced it with a newer model, and um, it, it just is very expensive to operate. Yeah, well, it's so time to. It's time to move update. On. It's, and you did. Moby did good, but uh, we got to move on. Um, another thing, another change. This is kind of going back. Uh, we we're going to have a principal uh, at the early childhood center. Um, Miss uh, Mack, mm -hmm. and then Mr. Crosswhite is will be the principal in. And I'm assuming everything stays the same. Um, he will be the lower elementary, which will be grades first through four next year. Okay. And fifth grade will be back as part of the middle or upper elementary. We honestly don't have a middle school. It's called the upper elementary. Gotcha. And so us old folks still call it the middle school. Yes, and is I think most everyone does, mm -hmm. but also. That will have a middle school principal now instead oh. of a uh, assistant. There's a high school principal and an assistant serving both. So, okay. and then Miss Avila will be. Have we um, have we chose that person? That yet? person will be um, something that will Mr. Sternberger will address. Okay. Uh, I will not be part of that. Our new superintendent. Uh, the new In superintendent, incoming. Jason Sternberger. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Miss Avila will be the high school uh, nine to twelve. Principal. So the the news part of that is fifth grade is back where you would fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth will be the middle school in that middle school building. Gotcha. Um, hopefully some of the like they'll still eat in where they did as fourth graders because it helps the the room and the, mm -hmm. the way they portion the meals. It it makes sense to do that, but uh, uh, that will be kind of going back to uh, the the way it was a while back. Okay. State testing. Start soon. Please keep your kiddos well rested, well fed, up to speed. Keep them hydrated and all that stuff so they can do well on the state test. Don't fall asleep in the test. Don't fall asleep in the test. Don't do any of that. And I have not ever heard anything back on uh, what you guys want to do with the walking track on the summer. Oh, the yeah. Summer. That was like a big... We so. had lots of questions about it, and then no one responded. So... If you're interested in the walking track being open during the summer, we, right. Dr. Woods needs to know. Yeah, when like we talk about mornings, uh, evenings, you know, like I think a lot of folks really like outside in the evenings, but maybe there's for other reasons that I'm not aware of. Sure, and if there's no interest, be, keep it closed. Yeah. But um, we will have a couple interns that because we have to hire people, mm -hmm. so we'd need to get our interns so in place. So when and, uh, when you do respond, we need to know what time of day you would be interested right. in. Give, and give me more information, just like yes. Does it have to be? Yeah. <laughs> Does it have to be every day? Can it be every other day? How how? What are you yeah. thinking? Yeah. And, and I mean, I think again, just kind of look and see. You guys have had a tremendous impact on how that's been run. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we've hired a second intern, and um, we were five days a week now in the evenings, and we're getting our summer or our, our uh, morning and noon is it busy schedules every day. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, cool. It's, that it's, is it's really been cool. amazing. Uh, 
the, uh, the, the participation. And, and I understand it's, it's controlled. You're not being chased by barking dogs and other things. You don't have to dodge Bumble cars and, or yep. yeah, anything geese. like geese. If, if go yeah. down to the pond there, yeah. And, yeah no, well, not only you're not chased by them, but you're not. The geese deposits. Yeah, not yeah. slicking and sliding away. Be careful where you're going. So, again, we, we've been tried to be responsive. And the other thing I'd ask them for some input on was, as a parent, would you like to have that evening time available that parent and child only, not an open gym. Oh, class, for, uh, for practice to work out yeah. in the gym. You and want to shoot free throws. You want to, I know the volleyball net's up now. If you had a kiddo that wants to play volleyball, mm -hmm. uh, they can work on that. So um, well, give, the only give thing, me a little feedback on that. The, only, the last one I have is that we had a uh, longtime board member, mm -hmm. Joe Garrison. Yep. Good friend uh, and uh, mentor. Resigned, retired, I guess is the right word yep. maybe, uh, for health reasons, right. and um, stepped down at our last board meeting. Yep. And um, so that was kind of, how long yeah. was he? You know how long? Nine he years. Been? He served for nine years. And wow. he was a, uh, th I, this may be a, a knock against him, but he was one of the primary reasons I'm even here. Was, <laughs> so, so after last couple board we'll meetings, see what happens don't that. hold yeah. that against him. <laughs> you know, but, uh, he, well, everyone's right, allowed yeah. to make one mistake. Yeah, that's I just all. happen to be hey, his. He just, you know, and I, I think it's fishy that he's leaving about the same time you are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of weird, but yeah. Oh well. Thank you, Joe, for all Absolutely. all the things you've done for the community and the school. And, and he received um, a well-deserved standing ovation when he that did, was announced. Actually, it's on the video. If you flag, go so. watch the video we posted two days ago, now um, the, you can uh, the, you can actually see they gave him a little nice little plaque yeah. and. Yeah. yeah, and one other other cool thing about that is that was created in house. We didn't have to go buy that. We we've got a really uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that was really nice. Yeah. I thought that was a like a store bought plaque. No, no, it's a school produced plaque. We got kids that can run the laser engraver and they can do just about anything. Well, that's you pretty do. slick. Yeah. I might need to talk to them. Yeah, well, See, we, we can fix you up. Get you some engraving done. Yeah. Give somebody a, an, an award for something. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Is that all you got? I think that's it for me. Very, very cool. All right, we'll be right back with Stacy Klein with Wellness Mercantile, and we'll see what she's been up to. This show made possible in part by Garrison Lumber Company, North Main Street, Hennessy. And we're back with longtime friend, Stacy Klein. So you just opened your new Wellness Mercantile on Main Street. What were you thinking? Like you don't, Stacy, what, what are some of the things you do? You're a rodeo announcer, you're a rodeo company, you're a farmer, a rancher, a... Counselor. Counselor. Mother. Yeah. And, to many. And, yeah. <laughs> so, tell us about the mercantile. Why did you start? I, there's a little backstory to that mercantile. Right. So, many people in Hennessy know that I was the school counselor for 15 years. and But I, far, I always have farmed with my dad on the side. Mm -hmm. We do native grasses and have cattle. And so I did that in the summer, and my cousin that grew up here, also farm girl, mm -hmm. turned lawyer, asked mm, five or six years ago if she could get the hemp bill passed in Oklahoma, would I consider growing farm or hemp mm -hmm. on our family farms? And I said, yeah. And so she did, and we did, and it became more uh, than I could handle with school counseling and farming, so I went farming full time, mm -hmm. and then we started growing hemp for CBD. All right. So... I wanted to clarify because okay. there's that big oh. mystery thing about hemp. Hemp right. is not marijuana. It has no THC in it, well, which or has. Tell me about okay, that. Okay, so so there's the difference between I would say cannabis and then you have cousins like you have dogs and then you have like poodles and German shepherds. So mm -hmm. uh, so you have cannabis and then you have marijuana and you have industrial hemp. So industrial hemp by the Department of Ag here in Oklahoma is point. 0.3% or below in THC, mm -hmm. which means you could smoke my entire field and not get high. It so, just give you a headache. Right. So I just want to make sure everybody <laughs> is clear what I, what I do grow, but we right. do grow hemp for CBD. And what do you do with hemp? What's What do you make? I mean, you can make rope and just right. so, all kinds of things. So a lot of people hear the CBD, which is one thing, mm -hmm. but you can also, the fiber from hemp, you can make ropes or cloth. The first Levi's was made out of hemp fabric. Um, they make... Uh, insulation now out of it hempcrete um they make uh, there's just there's car mercedes makes a car panels out of it i mean so you can do a lot it's with like, like they used to do with soy i guess 
it's a, it's a fiber that you can make things out of. Right, and it's That's it uses cool. less water. It keeps mm-hmm. from us deforestation of our trees. It can mm-hmm. make paper. The so there's tons of things that you can do with the cannabis plant. And gotcha. so we do industrial hemp right now specifically for CBD products. We were not going to do retail. Not going to do it. But we had too many people in Hennessy we're wanting. Not going we're to. not going to do it. Uh-huh. But we had so many people that wanted to take local uh-huh. organic practices uh-huh. and they wanted to know where their CBD was coming from. So we decided to do a run. Uh-huh. And that led into a product line, which led into an, uh, a website, which we have, hennessyhemp.com, uh-huh. which led to us looking for a storefront, which leads us to today. The storefront got really big. And we needed a storefront that would handle like a table like this big right now. Okay. So we were talking a little bit like a card table in a corner size building. Have you seen the place? It's huge. It's huge. <laughs> Everybody walks in and they go, oh my gosh, this building's so much bigger than I thought it was. And it is. It's a huge building. It's the size of half a city block almost. I mean, it's an enormous building. Right. But you do other things in there. Right. So um, at first we were like, yeah, this is too big. But my first degree was interior design, which a lot of people don't know. And I've Another always... Another one of her, and a professional photographer. And... Oh, that's true. And yeah. so yeah. I always wanted to flip a building. I wanted to redo it, and I love our Main Street buildings. Mm-hmm. And so when I walked in, just had a friend that had the job of selling the building. Mm-hmm. I walked in, and I was just like, oh. And it, this was a... Well, it's a historic building, but it was completely gutted to the walls with a new roof. That's all that was in it. Right. It was just a complete a shell. Empty envelope. Just yep. the walls, cool old brick walls. I mm-hmm. mean, it, it's it's a neat building. Yep. And so uh, my cousin and I, Tina Miller Walker, which a lot of people around here know, mm-hmm. um, we kind of started throwing around some ideas. And, and it ended up being kind of, a, I'd say, a God thing because I prayed about it. And then I kind of came up with this idea of diversifying the building. Mm-hmm. And so up front, um, we have, we're have we working working on getting a coffee shop cafe going. And mm-hmm. we just finished with the health department. So that should be soon. Jump through those hoops. We jump through those hoops. Mm-hmm. On the other side of that space is a boutique where we do sell our, our CBD products, our mm-hmm. line of CBD products, which has gotten it's gone really great. People come in. I get to educate them mm-hmm. on what hemp, industrial hemp and CBD is mm-hmm. and what it is not. It is not marijuana. It will not get you high. Um, we have a great salve that is truly, uh, I love hearing success stories. Do you have other stuff? It's a gift shop and right. all kinds of cool stuff. And, and we really want to stick with carrying made in Oklahoma products. We've, we're still adding to that. So a lot of, we carry some prepackaged food items, jellies. Um, you know, I want to expand. I want I want it to be a place for Hennessy people to come. I want to. I want it to be a blessing to Hennessy. Is mm-hmm. the whole, the whole reason. And it's a cool it. hangout. So. Like if you need to just get across the table from somebody, it's yeah. it's quiet. You can you can do that. And we have and, free Wi-Fi. So yeah. I even have some high school. Some of the kids starting to come up mm-hmm. to use our Wi-Fi, which is great. Um, and we we should be a full blown coffee shop. So eventually you'll be able to get the fun Starbucky coffees and so I, I want it to be a, a place people enjoy coming visiting and hanging out and now and but so far we've only talked about the first 25 percent of the building there's a 75 right. percent of the building in the back right. what's going on back there okay so in the back we have a big space that we finished out and it's an event space mm-hmm. and um, we've already had our first baby shower in there and then and then on top of that we have a area that has four offices one is just our office that we use for our stocking items in the boutique. Mm-hmm. Um, one, my niece, Lacey Sipe, has made a beauty shop out of, and mm-hmm. she's up and running, takes walk-ins Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays from 9 to 5, mm-hmm. and then we'll buy appointment and prom's coming up, and she does wedding parties and all that, and she does a great job. And um, then I have another space that I would like to rent out and give people opportunities in the area where they could, like, rent it out on Mondays. Like, I would love to get a masseuse oh, to come in. share. Off a share, like yeah. you could come in, like a masseuse could come up every Monday, or right now we've got counsel, a counselor come in like every every two weeks on a Tuesday. Mm-hmm. But I would like that way they don't have to rent out the whole space, but yeah. still just use it as you need it. Be able to come into Hennessy and um, you probably won't be able to find your pencils the next time you come, but, <laughs> but yeah, <I'm> kidding. <laughs> and, and I still have one full space I have not rented out yet. Is so it for rent? It is for rent, yes. Office for rent. Yes, so we still have an office for rent. Okay. So we're, we're getting there, and, and I'll have to tell you, the support from our community 
has has been great. They're they're glad that we were using the space, mm -hmm. that we saved the building. That um, well, the building was vacant for a really long time. For mm -hmm. those of you that are watching this from mm -hmm. somewhere else or you are from here, it used to be the Anthony Building. Mm -hmm. I think is when how I everyone my age remembers it. Right. And and then it was like the Dollar Store. Dollar General. And then it was a weight. A workout place mm -hmm. and then Legends. it just went into disarray the roof fell in it almost got condemned right i love so. i love it so, awesome yeah. well thank so, you so much for hanging out oh, so go, I, do, go, go. I do want to say that i'm, I'm really excited i'm the hemp thing i want you guys to know that you should be very proud of my cousin tina because she basically single-handedly got that hemp bill passed and it we were the first family to get it legally planted in hennessy mm -hmm. since world war ii so, which is a pretty cool thing. Is it, did it used to grow here? Mm -hmm. uh, the last time that it grew legally was during World War II. They lifted the band because they needed the fiber for the war effort to make ropes really? and, and, and fabric. And then, wow. and then as soon as the need was gone, then they took it away. They put, took it away. Mm -hmm. And we still have some plots around Hennessy that still come up that was originally original planted stuff. in World War II. There's, if you're a history buff, it's called... Uh, Hemp for Victory, or Victory for, Hemp for Victory, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a black and white film. You can Google it. It's kind of interesting, but it was a well, propaganda. Well, cool to look that up. It was a propaganda film to get farmers mm -hmm. to, to grow for the war It's effort. probably on YouTube. So, so anyway, so it's cool. So two women mm -hmm. from Hennessy, kind of making history, even though it's agriculture history, but it's kind of two, two, two okay. women that, you know. Doing, doing some groundbreaking things, which I think I'm is I'm so proud cool. of you for so. all the things you've done and and so. I, keep, I keep putting on hats. Turning that building into what it is and yeah. Well, thank you. And very I, I appreciate well, I appreciate it. And it's it's definitely taken the whole village and the encouragement, which you've been a huge support and I'm a huge help. Cheerleader. He, he on, has uh, helped us with branding <laughs> and and always giving me good advice on how to uh, present ourselves and and get uh, our. Uh, products out there and helping us but you do that for everybody in Hennessy which is which is great and we appreciate it so you make us look we look professional I keep saying this we look professional in Hennessy because Jack is a professional I, I noticed this that Stacy is is famous for oh. um, keeping notes on her hand it's, uh, <laughs> that's what when I die they're gonna bring this up my students everybody's like she always wrote on her hands <laughs> so, I forget things so I have to Thanks for hanging out with me today. And uh, that's all we got today. I've put uh, Stacy's contact information in the description of this video. Check it out. We'll see you guys next week.